Great. So welcome to lecture number 16, ME303 heat transfer. So yesterday we stopped at a point where uh, we talked about this quantity called a bio number. Okay. So we call this BI the bio number. And this quantity is defined as H times a characteristic length divided by K. So uh, remember we talked about this uh, talked about this bar that uh, we said that let, let's say we're quenching it. So uh, what's happening is you have uh, a fluid uh, cooling it, which has a temperature of T infinity and a heat transfer coefficient of H. And uh, the, the solid has a thermal conductivity of K and there's some characteristic length across which the temperature drop or, or the temperature difference exists. So in this case, which uh, if, if you uh, cool something and let's say the temperature, uh, the, the space effects are, uh, are are relevant. So what you will see is that uh, initially you will have, uh, con uh, well, let's use a different color. So initially you will have, let's say a constant temperature that's uh, at T equal to zero. But as time proceeds, you will see that since you have a cold fluid and this initially was hot. So what will happen is that the temperature is going to um, go down. And uh, what you will see is that after some time you will have, uh, um, we, we are uh, talking about a case where the bio number is uh, greater than one. So that means spatial effects are um, relevant. So in this case, what you will see is that you will see some temperature drop. So you'll have some center line temperature, which will be high and the boundary temperatures will be low. And then you will see that uh, uh, the temperature will then drop to T infinity. So if, if this is my T infinity and this is, uh, so, so then you will see a temperature drop to T infinity. Okay, so if, if we draw the circuit, so what we'll see is uh, from uh, the center, uh, you have, uh, so this I'll call T center and then you have T surface, and then you have another resistance, and then you have T infinity. Okay, so this is R T convection, and uh, and this one is R T conduction. So I hope you can, uh, you're able to read this, whatever, whatever I'm writing on the screen. The font is not uh, too small. All right. So this is uh, what happens. So uh, in this case, where your bio number that we have taken is uh, greater than one, sorry, uh, greater than one. So in this case, uh, you will see that uh, you will have uh, some temperature drop between the center and the surface. So what I mean to well, the reason I was discussing this was because we have to find a characteristic length. So the length we'll take here is uh, if if the actual bar length was two L. Then in this case, our LC, um, LC can be taken as L. Okay, so that's a, a solid, uh, the, the, the thickness in the solid across which you see a significant uh, drop in temperature. Well, you see a drop in temperature. Yeah, if I had taken 2L, then I've taken the complete thickness. But again, um, usually what we do is because we want to use bio number to decide whether uh, spatial effects should or should not be considered. So we uh, play conservative. So um, I'll write this, we tend to So we tend to uh, be conservative. So what that means is um, we over estimate LC. So what that means is that if you overestimate LC, you overestimate bio number. And that means that uh, you're playing it very safe and uh, you would not use the lumped capacitance model unless your bio number is extremely small. Okay, so then uh, that, that's how uh, typically we work in engineering. We tend to play um, safe. All right, so do we have any questions?
Now you may ask, like, what, what is the typical value of the bio number uh, that we have to have uh, below which we can assume dump capacitance model? So uh, again, uh, typical. Let's say again, typically, if your bio number is less than zero point one, then um, the lumped capacitance model can be assumed. Can be used. Okay. Otherwise, you have to use. Um, uh, so, um, what that means is, you can assume T is only a function of temperature. Okay, otherwise, you have to consider spatial effects. We haven't talked about how to consider spatial effects yet, but uh, at least since we've talked about the lumped capacitance model, so we have a rule now to check whether we can use that. Uh, move on from here. Uh, if if uh, since since I had drawn a figure where I've shown you condition for bio number greater than one, you will see that uh, there will be a significant drop inside uh, the uh, significant uh, temperature drop inside your uh, solid, and the temperature drop between the solid surface and the fluid is not that much. Um, let's take another uh, sorry, another extreme case. Uh, where your bio number is uh, less than 0 0.1, or uh, let's say it's, it's much smaller than 0 0.1, okay, then this figure looks uh, much more appropriate. So what what will happen is that at t equal to zero, you will have uh, some temperature which is t initial. Again, I'll be using the vertical levels to denote the uh, magnitude of temperature. So at initial temperature, you have a hot uh, bar which has a Ti temperature that you quench in liquid, so you have uh, some liquid around this. Okay. So what happens is the temperature will drop; it will cool down with time. Uh, but since we have a very small bio number, so temperature drop across the solid will not be that significant. So what we'll see is that uh, after some time, this is our center line. So after some time, we see that the temperature uh, drop across this solid. Uh, we will not see much of a temperature difference. So we'll have something like this. And then the temperature will suddenly drop to T infinity. So this level that I've given is T infinity. So there is no uh, meaning of the temperature going down outside. It's just to uh, show you. So you have T infinity here. So what you see is that, uh, and, and with time, as uh, so this is t equal to t1, and then after some time, you will see that the temperature is going to further drop down. So slowly, the temperature will drop down ultimately to t infinity, because uh, it will cool down and reach the liquid temperature. I'm assuming that liquid bath is very huge, so the liquid is not getting heated in this case. OK, so uh, now if, if you see these two figures uh, visually, then uh, you can clearly see that um, how, how things look in this case. If I, if, if I were to draw another um, time, a later time for the uh, blue case, that is bio number greater than 1, I would uh, see that after some time, the uh, temperature will So that's some later time. I mean, it, this figure should be much smoother, but you'll see that it will still have that uh, hump, and that hump, the, the maximum size will go down because it's getting cooling. Uh, it's getting cooled down. OK? So this is what we see. Um, and again, as I said, that this, so uh, now this was a, a case where you had, uh, there's another way you estimate LC. Okay, the characteristic length for the bio number because it's extremely important to calculate the bio number to be able to say whether you can use your uh, lump capacitance model or not. So uh, this LC is also calculated as a ratio of the volume of the solid to the surface area because sometimes you have these arbitrary shaped bodies and you don't know what what exactly I mean, it's an arbitrary shape. So you can also estimate um, your LC as volume to surface area. So for example, for uh, a sphere, your volume is 4 by 3 
pi r cube and the surface area is 4 pi r square. So what you see is, uh, so you get uh, r by 3. So, um, but again, um, sphere is a very uh, symmetric shape. So uh, this is your r. In this case, again, to be more conservative, um, I will take this to be r. So that will overestimate my bio number, and then I'll be much more safer. Uh, and I may not end up using the lump capacitance model um, where it, it may not be valid. So it's always good to play safe um, and uh, end up using the spatial variation so that you don't uh, make an error in the calculation of temperature. All right. OK, uh, so let us solve a problem. So uh, let's let's solve a problem. This one's example 5.1. Um, the reason I'm doing this is uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's actually as heat transfer analysts, we tend to use this uh, lumped capacitance model a lot. In fact, uh, um, sometimes, in, as we'll see in the example, uh, we, we, we don't even know the bio number. So uh, what we do is we assume the lumped capacitance model to be valid and get something because it's very easy to get some estimate quickly. Okay, so let's see uh, what what uh, how we do that and then but but then we have to check once we get the answer by assuming a lumped capacitance model we have to check what the bio number is. Okay, so it's it's uh, sort of a recursive way but um, uh, it's it's always uh, the first estimate is to assume that uh, the spatial dependence is not there at all. Okay, uh, so let's uh, go ahead with the example. So in this example, we have a thermocouple junction. Sure, everybody knows what a thermocouple is. Okay, uh, so uh, thermocouples are device. Thermocouples are devices which use uh, which uh, use the uh, what's called the Peltier effect. Okay, uh, to um, calculate um, the uh, temperature. So what we do is we create a junction. And then um, what we'll see is that a temperature uh, difference will ultimately result in a potential difference. And that potential difference can be uh, measured. So once you calibrate the device, you can measure the temperature of any, um, any uh, body. So thermocouple junction. Um, which may be approximated as a sphere. So you, what you do is you take uh, two wires, which are of different material, and you create a junction. So you uh, stick them and create a bead uh, above it. And that bead is then touched to the body that you want to measure the temperature for. So this uh, junction um, can be estimated, can be uh, approximated as a sphere. And this is used to uh, measure the temperature in a gas stream. Um, so we have a thermocouple junction. So you have these two wires which are going in create a junction. And this is used to measure the temperature of some gas stream that is flowing. The convection coefficient between the junction surface and the gas is 400 watts per meter square Kelvin. So in this case, H is uh, 400 watts per meter square Kelvin. So you, if you remember, this, this definitely is a forced convection situation. In fact, this is a gas stream, this flowing gas that you want to measure the temperature for. And thermophysical properties um, uh, are the, uh, the thermal conductivity of the solid. So this is your solid. So the K for the solid is 20 watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, so this is not a very conductive uh, material. It's just not an insulating material as well, but not ex extremely conducting. Then um, you have... Uh, um, the uh, C, the specific heat, is uh, 400 joules per kg Kelvin. And uh, your density of the solid is uh, 8,500 kg per meter cube. So this is given. And uh, uh, we have to determine the junction diameter. So we still haven't created the junction. We are designing it. So we have to determine the diameter of the junction uh, for which the time constant of this thermocouple is one second. 
Okay, so the tau is given as one second. Again, it's very important. Remember, you when you when you take the measurement uh, using thermometer, you have to decide how long should I keep it. If, if you're measuring your body temperature, how how long should I keep it inside my mouth so that I get the right temperature? And uh, that's everything to do with time constant. Okay? So you want the time constant in this case to be one second. Remember, time constant is that time uh, which which uh, drops the temperature to 0 0.63 or 63 percent of. Uh, well, well, you reach 37% of the final value. Okay, so that's so you want the time constant to be one second in this case. So that's a, I mean, you want to have that's a design criteria, and uh, the junction initially is at 25 degrees centigrade. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, that, that's uh, that's the, this is the first part. The second part is, if the junction initially is at 25 degrees centigrade, uh, and uh, you place it in this gas stream, which is at 200 degrees centigrade. And temperature gas is 200 degrees centigrade. How long will it take for the junction to reach 199 degrees centigrade? Again, a very uh, valid uh, question. How long will it take to reach that temperature, which is uh, one degree less than the gas temperature? All right, so let's start with the uh, first one to estimate the diameter. Now, uh, this is, again, a case of a transient situation where your temperature is going down with time. Now, you don't know if you can use temperature as a function of time. So for that, you need to know the bio number. And bio number is H times LC by K. Now, uh, in this case, uh, we can take the characteristic length. Let's be conservative. So we'll call it H times D by 2, which is the radius, because uh, the drop temperature drop is happening across the radius uh, by K. But we do not know the D. That is what we have to estimate. So let us assume that the lumped capacitance model can be used. Um, the lumped capacitance model. I'll call it the LCM. So let's assume that uh, the lumped capacitance model can be used. So in that case, uh, we uh, we know that uh, the time constant, uh, as we estimated yesterday, was rho times the volume times C divided by H times the surface area, right? And uh, again, uh, this you can see is uh, 1 by H A S, which is your thermal resistance, and rho V C, which is your thermal capacitance. So this is R C, like you have in circuits. So we know these values. We know um, we know the density and the volume of this is uh, four by three pi d cube by eight. Then you have this specific heat divided by h. And the surface area is pi um, r square. So you have four here. Okay. Uh, so I won't calculate this. Um, but uh, this uh, has to be equal to one second. So that's uh, given to us. Okay, so uh, density is known. Uh, diameter has to be calculated. And as the specific heat is known, the H value is known. Uh, and again, diameter has to be calculated. And we have. Uh, this uh, equal to one second. So if I, uh, if I if I use this equation, so what this gives me is that my diameter comes out to be 7.06 into 10 raised per minus 4 meters. 
So this is uh, 0 0.7 millimeter. It's uh, slightly less than a millimeter. So that's the uh, junction diameter you need uh, for uh, having a time constant of one second. It makes sense. I mean, you won't have a huge junction. Otherwise, you will. it will take time. It will have to lose heat. It will take a lot of time to um, come to the temperature of the fluid of, or the gas stream in this case. Okay, But uh, we have used the lump capacitance model, but we don't really know if that can be used. So now that we have a D estimate, let's uh, see what the bio number is. So using this D, we can estimate the bio number, which uh, if you substitute this, uh, comes out to be actually, uh, if, if we use the, uh, the uh, non-conservative estimate, so that is H times R by three, which is your uh, volume to surface area ratio, time by K, this comes out to be 2.3 into 10 raised per minus three. See, extremely small. It's much less than 0.1. In fact, if you had taken uh, a conservative estimate and uh, instead of uh, r by 3, you take r, which is d by 2, even then this number is simply three times of this, which is uh, around, uh, so, which is 7 to 10 is power minus 3. Okay. So uh, that means that uh, we are, so the lumped capacitance, we can write that the lumped capacitance model can safely be used. If the temperature drop across the sphere, thermocouple sphere, is uh, negligible as compared to temperature drop across the sphere surface and the gas stream. Okay, that solves the uh, first uh, part. The next part is, uh, so now that you have a diameter with you now, um, it, it's, it's been asked uh, of us, if uh, the initial uh, temperature of the thermocouple is 25 degrees centigrade, it's, it's at ambient temperature, and now you dip it in the gas stream, how long will it take to reach 199 degree centigrade? Okay. So again, if we recall uh, yesterday's um, solution that we had obtained, so we had theta divided by theta i was equal to e to the power of minus T by tau. I'm just quickly checking it. Yeah. So this is uh, what we got. Okay, so theta was defined as temperature minus T infinity. And theta i was uh, temperature initial minus T infinity. If I substitute those numbers, so I get T as a function of time minus T infinity. T infinity is 25 degrees centigrade and theta i is, uh, sorry, T infinity is 200 degrees centigrade. That's the gas stream temperature. And T i is your, uh, the initial temperature, which is 25 degree centigrade. And this is equal to e to the power of minus T upon tau. And tau we just calculated. Uh, but tau actually, uh, oh, sorry, a uh, tau in this case, uh, yeah, tau is one second. Okay, so uh, we have designed this thermocouple for a one second. So this becomes one second. Okay. Well, uh, so you can put the numbers and uh, what we do is we'll take a log of both sides. Okay, so I can take, uh, so basically my T becomes minus of this. Okay, so when, when you put the numbers, uh, what you'll see is you'll get uh, 5.2 seconds. So this is approximately uh, five times your time constant. Okay, so you will need five time constants uh, for reaching a temperature, which is 199 degree centigrade. Again, uh, it's important to estimate this. Otherwise, uh, you may not be sure how accurately you are measuring. So uh, if, if once you create your standard operating procedures, 
should be able to say that since your gas temperature usually is around 200 degrees centigrade, uh, but of course it's uh, plus and minus whatever. So you should spend around five seconds, a uh, the thermocouple should spend around five seconds in the gas stream uh, for uh, getting an accurate estimate of the temperature. Any questions? All right. Uh, now, uh, before we move to the next section, uh, where we start studying the spatial effects, just one point. Um, in this case, if you remember again from yesterday's discussion, we said that in this case, we are not using the, for lumped capacitance analysis, we did not use the uh, heat uh, conduction equation. Because uh, there's nothing conducting. I mean, everything is at the same temperature inside the solid. Okay, so we use a simple energy balance equation, which was a balance between the energy that was stored or energy that was leaving from the solid uh, and the energy that was convecting out. Now, it may happen that you also have a radiation from the surface. Then you have to make sure when you write that initial equation, it's as well. So you will have then the stored energy is equal to convection plus radiation. So you'll get a different differential equation that you have to solve uh, to get the temperature as a function of time. So it could happen that in the exam, I would give you a question where uh, you have to use, uh, you have to develop the equation first and then solve it using your uh, ODE or differential equation ideas and then estimate the temperature as a function of time and time constant and so on. Okay, uh, so please be careful uh, before blindly applying your lumped capacitance analysis because you may have some other effects which may be dominating as well. OK, uh, so let's move on to the next section where uh, the, the, the spatial effects may be dominant. So for that, uh, let's write the, uh, now that the spatial effects are dominant, we, we can use the conduction equation. So let's write the equation del theta, sorry, um, del T by del T is equal to um, del 2 t by del x squared. Okay, so we are assuming that uh, the spatial effects are only uh, relevant in one direction. So it's a 1D situation in space, and there's no generation. Okay. So no heat generation. We have a homogeneous k, and then we have a 1D, sorry, 1D in space. So this is what we are assuming. So we get this equation. Now uh, uh, we, we use uh, uh, what we will do now is we will non dimensionalize. So what, what we do is we say that theta is uh, um, is we define theta as the temperature, which is a function of x and t minus t initial divided by, sorry, uh, minus t infinity divided by t initial minus t infinity. Okay, so t infinity is the temperature uh, of, uh, this is my solid, then this is my t infinity. And uh, T initial is the temperature at, um, at T equal to zero. That's the initial condition. Okay, so we uh, create this new uh, non-dimensional temperature, which we call theta. So if we substitute that, um, in uh, my heat conduction equation, um, so we get, uh, 
Well, I can write k by rho c as alpha if you remember thermal diffusivity. So uh, my my t can be written as um, theta times t i minus t infinity plus t infinity. So uh, I get del temperature by del time. So we get uh, del theta by del time times t i minus t infinity is equal to alpha. So alpha is k by rho c. And then I have a second derivative of temperature with respect to x. So this becomes uh, del 2 theta by del x squared. And then I have um, this whole thing multiplied by t i minus t infinity. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, this this uh, T i minus infinity can be um, cancelled from both sides. So this is what you get. Now I would also want to non-dimensionalize my time in x. Okay. So uh, let's non-dimensionalize my x. So uh, we can define a non-dimensional x, which we call x star, as my x divided by some characteristic length l. If okay, so I substitute that in the equation, so what I get is um, del theta by del t equals uh, alpha del 2 theta. And now um, x is written as x star times L. So we have an L square. And then you have um, del x star. Okay, so what ultimately now we have is uh, now you know that uh, this this term has no dimension. Um, this term has no dimension, so this term has to have a dimension of one by t to balance this uh, t that we have on the left hand side. Okay. So uh, what that does is it helps us define um, a non-dimensional temperature t star, which is t um, divided by um, L squared by alpha. So now we have an equation which is del theta by del t star is equal to del 2 theta by del x star square. So I'll tell you why we are doing all this. But what we have done is we have non dimensionalized, and you can see that your uh, alpha or the coefficient has vanished now. Okay, so it's it's uh, much more convenient to uh, work with this, and then you um, get your theta as a function of t star and x star. So uh, this in this case, your uh, theta is a function of x star and t star. All right, uh, now let's look at the boundary conditions because we have simply talked about um, this this bar that we are solving. So remember, this this is a situation. Let me mention that. So B i is uh, not less than zero point one. So that means temperature is a function of x and t here. So we are all doing all this to develop that equation that we solved to get the temperature as a function of x and t here. OK, uh, so what are the boundary conditions in this case? So the boundary condition that we have um, is for temperature is, uh, so th this is my x equal to 0, and this is my x equal to L. And so this bar is of size 2L, or 2LC if you want to call it. Uh, then the boundary conditions I have are the center line boundary condition. So now you know that's symmetric. So that means we'll have a symmetric boundary condition. So del temperature by del x at x equal to 0 is 0. So that's my adiabatic or symmetric boundary condition. And the second boundary condition is on the surface. 
where the uh, conduction is equal to convection. That means minus k del t by del x at x equal to L is equal to h times a and t minus t infinity. Again, this is at t at the surface. So I'll call it tl. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, sorry, uh, you, you will not have an A here because uh, that A will also exist on the left hand side. We have an H times TL minus T infinity. Okay, so now we can write this in terms of our theta as well. So if, if I uh, use the theta form, then this becomes, uh, now let's use this. So we have T as theta times ti minus t infinity plus t infinity. So if I do a del t by del x here, I get del theta by del x. And then since it's 0 on the right hand side, so this is 0. Okay, So this is at x equal to 0. In fact, since I'm working with x star, so I can also call it x star, because x star is simply x by l. Now, uh, for the second boundary condition, I have uh, a minus k. I'll, uh, so let's uh, move the minus k on the other side. So my del t by del x uh, becomes uh, del theta by del x star. And then I have a ti minus t infinity. Um, and then since I've uh, used an x star, so x was written as x star times L. So I have an L here. And on the right hand side, I have an h by k. I also move the minus sign here. And then I have a t L minus t infinity. All right. This uh, now, now this is at x equals L. So that means this is at x star equals 1. This is just I have del theta by del 1, because x star is x by L. So for x equal to L, we have x star equal to 1. On the right hand side, we have minus h L by k. Uh, which actually is the bio number. And then you have 